Hi, Peter Salemian. Welcome back to part five of this video series on the Passover. Of course, we're doing a series of videos defending the position that we Christians need to keep the Passover and that the New Testament church kept the Passover. We see it in 1 Corinthians 5th chapter. The Apostle Paul says, Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. They were observing the Passover, the New Testament church. Colossians 2.16 plainly shows that they were keeping the holy days of God that we find in, Le in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. The apostles in the Gospels kept the Passover with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So the New Testament church kept the Passover as opposed to Easter. And that Easter, when you look at any encyclopedia, they will tell you the origins of Easter. It originates in paganism with the Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring. But that festival crept into the church. Now, how did that happen? Well, as the church got uh, became less and less Jewish and more and more Gentile, and the anti-Semitism was rampant in the church in the second century, they wanted to establish their own identity separate from the Jews. And so they looked into their old pagan background, got this festival called took this festival called Easter, and then they dressed it up and called it Christian and tried to impose it on the rest of the Christian church. The church in Rome tried to oppose it, impose it on the rest of the Christian church. And so the majority of churches were celebrating the Passover and they rejected this, uh, this uh, doctrine that we need to celebrate Easter, that Easter was the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. People like Polyocrates and Polycarp told the Bishop Victor in Rome that they are not going to celebrate Easter. They're going to continue to celebrate what the apostles handed down to them, which was the Passover. And of course, that started the whole, what is called the Quattro Deciman controversy. But eventually the Catholic Church won, took over, and now the dominant uh, festival in the Christian world is Easter. But originally, that was not so. Now some people argue, well wait Pete, what about Acts the 12th chapter, verse 4, where it says this. It says, and when he, that's Herod, had apprehended him, that's the Apostle Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers, to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And people argue, well, there it is. Easter's in the Bible, and the Christian church celebrated Easter. Is that true? Is that what the scripture's telling us? Well, let's see what the commentaries say. And here from Clark's commentary, it says this. It says, there was never, there never was a more absurd or unhappy translation than this. The original is simply after the Passover. That's what this should read. And look at the context, verse 3. It says, because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then it says, then were the days of unleavened bread. The context is the Passover, the days of unleavened bread. So this word Easter should be translated Passover. When you look at the context, now it says here, the original is simply the Passover. The word Easter now, notice he says, the word Easter now denotes the festival observed by many Christian churches in honor of the resurrection of the Savior. That's now, after 2,000 years of propaganda of Easter's Christian, Easter's Christian. And that's what it is now, but it says here, but the original has no reference to that nor is there the slightest evidence that any such festival was observed at the time when the book was written. There's no evidence of the Christian church, the New Testament church, celebrating Easter. They celebrated the Passover, as I mentioned to you in 1 Corinthians 5th chapter. Then it says, the translation is not only unhappy, as it does not convey at all the meaning of the original, but because it may contribute to foster an opinion that such a festival was observed in the time of the apostles, and it did not. That's the purpose of inserting Easter in there, to foster an opinion that maybe they celebrated Easter, but they did not. You cannot find that in history or the Bible. It says, the word Easter 
is of Saxon origin, not Greek, but Saxon origin, and is supposed to be derived from Aster, the god of love, or the Venus of the North, in honor of whom a festival was celebrated by our pagan ancestors in the month of April. All right, now notice what he says here about how the word Easter crept into the King James translation. He says this, in the old Anglo-Saxon service books, the term Easter is used frequently to translate the word Passover. This is a habit that they have of when every time they saw a Passover, they would put Easter. And then it says in the translation by Wycliffe, the word Pasche, that is Passover, is used. But Tyndale and Coverdale use the word Easter, and hence it has very improperly crept into our King James version. So this is how it got translated into Easter by this old habit of translating Passover into Easter when it should just read the Passover because Easter doesn't mean the Passover. Easter means the old Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring and that festival. Now notice what uh, Smith's Bible commentary says. It says, it says Easter there and that's a King James translation. They did not know anything about Easter in the early church. The word in the Greek is Passover, after the time of unleavened bread. As the context says here, then were the days of unleavened bread in verse 3. And when you look at the chronology, the chronology of the whole book of Acts, the whole chronology is centered around the weekly Sabbath and God's festivals and holy days. You see the fast mentioned at the end of the book of Acts. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, I must by all means keep this feast that comes. And he was talking about Pentecost. Here we see, then were the days of unleavened bread. That's the context. Then in verse 4, it talks about the Passover. The context is the days of unleavened bread and the Passover. And when these words are mentioned here, it's talking about the season, meaning all seven days of the Passover. We even say it today. When you look at the calendar, it says, Passover begins, Passover ends talks about the whole seven days called Passover or the whole seven days called the days of unleavened bread. So when you look at the book of Acts, the whole chronology of the book of Acts is based around the weekly Sabbath and God's feast days. And this is the context. So Easter is not part of God's feast days and it should read the Passover. All right, it says, and this, the, the word uh, the word in the Greek is Passover after the day, the time of unleavened bread. And because this was translated by the King James translators in the 1600s, and by this time, this pagan celebration of Ashtar had invaded the church and was changed slightly to Easter instead of Ashtar. Smith's Bible commentary. All right, Bullinger's Companion Bible. It says this, the Greek, Pascha, the Passover. Easter is a heathen term derived from the, uh, the Saxon goddess Aster the same as Astarte, the Syrian Venus, called Ashtaroth in the Old Testament. That's Bullinger's Companion Bible. The JFB commentary, it says, rather, after the Passover. That's how it should read. That is, after the whole festival was over. And of course, it means the whole festival called Passover, the whole seven days. It means the season. Then it says, the word in our King James Version is an ecclesiastical term of a later date. After, you know, all the propaganda and all the twisting of uh, scripture and tradition, then it became Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But originally it wasn't so. It was, this is a term of a later date and, it, and ought not to have been employed here. So plainly, every commentary will tell you that this word should read the Passover, the context, then were the days of unleavened bread. The Passover, that is the context, and all, the whole chronology of the book of Acts is centered around God's festivals and God's weekly Sabbath. So this uh, word Easter should read the Passover. Now, if you want to know more, I urge you to get our booklet, Passover Is It For Christians? Free of charge, off our website, British Israel. .ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends. I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.